Okay. This program does everything we asked it to. It handles multiple files. But we need to show you one more thing before we're ready to release this. Let's show you the problem. Python count fish.py Jerry and Steve. Not a problem. Total number of creatures seen 2, total number of creatures seen 30. Hmm. Let's fix that up, going into the editor. And rather than printing total number of creatures seen, let's print file name plus a colon and the total. Rerun the program. All right, this looks more like the output of something like WC it's sh or grep. It's showing me a file name, a colon, and then the total number of creatures seen. Nice and dense. If I want to go through and do something like cut with the delimiter space, dash field two, that's great. I just get the counts. If I want to do something like run that through sort in reverse order, that's great too. I can use the output in a Unix pipe. But what if I want to do something like cat, Jerry, and Steve and pipe that to python countfish.py? Nothing happens. Why? Well, countfish.py is always expecting there to be file names on the command line and it only ever reads data from files. It doesn't know how to read from the preceding stage of a pipeline. In order to be a well-behaved Unix tool, it should know how to play like other well-behaved Unix tools. In particular, it should know how to read from the previous stage of a pipeline if there is one. How can it tell? Well, if it's not given any file names, it should handle the previous, it should read data from whatever came before it in the pipe. So, in order to show you how this works, we need to introduce a couple more things that are in the sys library. And again, these show up in every programming language. The names might be slightly different, but they can all do these things because people, programmers, want to be able to use Fortran and MATLAB and R and Python interchangeably on the Unix command line. They want to be able to take a file parsing program written in Perl, send its output through some pre-processing code that was written in Fortran 30 years ago, and send that to an R program that does some statistics, and send that to something that a friend gave them that happens to be written in Perl that will automatically annotate the results. Let's have a look at how we can do that. I'm going to go and create um, pipeline.py. Here's an example of how to do things in a pipeline. I import sys, and then I'm going to say for line in sys.standardinput, print I read line. What is STDIN? Well, every program in Unix automatically and always has three open files, one for input and two for output, and they have special names. There's always one program, there's always one file rather, open for input that's called standard input. And by default, it's reading from the keyboard. There are two open for output. They're called standard out and standard error. And by default, both go to your screen. Standard output is normal output. Standard error is things like error messages, the ones that we've seen when we try to use an undefined variable, for example. When you're in a pipeline, though, instead of your standard input being connected to the keyboard, Unix connects it to the output of whatever came before you. Similarly, if, you're, if, you, if there are stages after you in the pipeline, your standard output doesn't go directly to the screen. It goes to the input of the next stage in the pipeline. Standard error will still go to the screen because if there are error messages from something in the middle of a pipeline, you want them to come out onto the screen rather than being passed down the pipeline and processed as if they were data. That's why there are two output files, channels, standard output and standard error. So, normally 
a program's standard input is keyboard, but if there's something in front of it, a pipeline, its standard input is plugged into the standard output of that thing. Similarly, normally its standard output goes to the screen, but if there's something after it in a pipeline, its standard output is connected to the standard input of what's downstream. So, let's say for line and sys.studin, print I read and the line. Python pipeline.py. There's nothing in front of this in the pipeline. So when I say this is what I typed, and then I use control D, that's control key plus D at the same time on Unix, or control Z or Z on Windows. Now my program sees the end of input. So it's been reading from keyboard and it prints out, I read, this is what I typed. But if I say something like cat jerry and pipe that to python pipeline.py, pipeline.py isn't trying to read from the keyboard. Behind the scenes, Unix has connected its standard input to the output of cat. Cat is usually printing files to the screen, but because it's the first stage in the pipeline and there's something after it, instead of being connected to screen, it's being connected to pipeline.py. So this output comes from pipeline.py. And again, it's double spaced because there's a new line at the end of each line, and then print is adding a new line as well. All right, what if I say Python, pipeline.py, read your input directly from Jerry? In this case, with the redirect input, that's the less than sign, what we're saying is directly connect my standard input to that file. And if I say python pipeline.py, read your input, i.e. connect standard in, from jerry2012.txt, redirect output to results.txt, that greater than sign that we saw in the shell episode, what it's doing is saying, connect my standard output to that file. Okay, and now if I take a look at results.txt, there's what I expected. We'll get rid of that temporary file. All right, let's come back to our pipeline.py program. File names is sys.argv from one to the end. That's everything except the program name. If len of file names is equal to zero, notice that's a double equal sign because we're testing for equality. Single equal sign means assignment. Then I don't have any files to read from, else I have some files to read from. Okay, let's take a look at my command line arguments and see whether I've got some files or not. If I don't, then I want to say for line in sys.studin, print len of line. Let's just show you the length of each line as we read it. Otherwise, for name in file names, reader is open that file in read mode. For line in reader, print len line, reader close. So here, I'm going to open the file, read each line, show you the length of the line, close the file, and I'm going to do that for each file in turn because I actually have some file names. Here, in the if, you didn't give me any file names, so I'm going to assume that you want me to read from standard input because else I wouldn't have any data. So, switch back to the shell, python pipeline.py of Jerry, and the line's lengths are 56, 19, 20, and 19 characters. And if I do this and Steve, I get much more output. If I do it with no file names at all, this is my input and hit control D. Sorry, my finger bounced on the D there, that's why you get 5D. You can see that I get THIS new line characters, so there's five characters on the first line, four that you can see plus the new line. IS new line is the three, MI new line is the three, INPUT new line is the six. So it was reading from keyboard. And if I cat Jerry and pipe it to pipeline.py, good, that's what I'm expecting. If I cat Jerry and Steve and send those to Python, pipeline.py, I get that. I've taken the two files, concatenated them, and sent that to the standard input of Python, of pipeline.py, and it knows to read from standard input, 
because it didn't get any file names itself. Somebody else has been aggregating its input. All right, this seems like a very useful pattern, but there's repeated code. This is too large. There's a loop inside a loop, and there is repeated code because this for line and sys.studin and this for line and reader are doing pretty much the same thing, just on different sources. So let's define process source to be for line in source, print len of line. And here, I will process sys.studin. And here, I will process that open file. So, if you didn't give me any file names, I'm going to do something with standard input. If you did give me file names, I'll process each one of those in turn. Have I broken anything? Mm, looks like I haven't. Yep, looks like that still works. Out of curiosity, what happens if I cat Jerry and pipe that to Python pipeline.py of Steve? Well, pipeline.py is going to ignore standard input. It's not going to read anything from the previous stage because it sees it's got a file name and it's only going to pay attention to that. This is actually a common mistake. Right? The second stage of my pipeline, this one, is deciding whether or not to read from standard input, i.e. from the preceding stage of the pipeline, based on whether or not it has file names. Well, it does have file names. And it only processes those files when they're present. So, here's a pattern. If I don't have any file names, process standard input. If I do, process each one of those. So let's go back into our fish counter and say all file names is sys.argv. So, if len of all file names is zero, then, oh, huh. look at this. Total equals get total. We've got total equals get total of sys.studin. We've got a function that knows how to process an open file. Print standard input, because we don't want it to look like a regular file. Total. Else, do that. We can even make this clear. Let's just use double dash to mean we were reading from standard input. This is a sign of a well-designed program. I wanted to make a change. I didn't have to rewrite any of these functions. The change only needed to be made in one place. I don't have to go back and change a single line of get total. I don't have to go back and change a single line of any of the other functions that I wrote. The change from always read files to either read files or standard input required me to make one change in one place. Okay, that's a good design. Here, it's exactly the same pattern that I just implemented in pipeline.py. If you didn't give me any file names, then I'm going to process standard input, and I'm going to print the result there. If you did give me files, I'm going to process here. Okay, let's see if I broke anything. Python count fish with Jerry, still does the right thing with Jerry and Steve, still does the right thing. Now let's cat Jerry and pipe that to Python count fish. It says, I don't know what the file name is because I'm reading from standard input. Countfish.py doesn't know the file name or file names being processed by earlier stages in the pipeline. So we just get it to print a double dash. But it's giving me the same result that it gave when it processed Jerry directly. I get the same result when I process Steve. And when I process the two together, I get the total of 32 because the data has all been concatenated before it reaches Countfish. So as far as Countfish knows, it's processing one long file instead of two separate files. All right, this is pretty cool. At this point, I would commit to version control. But I can clean this up a little bit. What I'm repeatedly doing is getting the total and printing the result. Down here, I'm printing the file name colon and total. So let's say get total of sys.studin and we'll use double dash as a file name. And here we'll get total of reader and file name. And rather than returning total, we'll say uh, whence. Now that's too fancy a name. File name. Print file name plus a colon and total. 
and now I don't return anything. What I've done is take that pair of lines, get the total, and then print it out in a certain format, and make sure that the print's only happening in one place. That way I know the format will always be consistent. If I have print statements scattered through my program, and they're all supposed to be using the same format, sooner or later I will change one or two or three and not change the others, and then I will have inconsistent output, and that's harder to process. This way, there's only one place in the program where the output's created. It's always file name with a colon immediately after it, and then the total count. If what I'm processing is standard input, I give you double dash as the file name. If I've got an actual file name, then I use that file name. Let's see if I've broken anything. So, let's try 527. Yep, that worked. And 530. That worked too. All right. After all this refactoring, I've got something that I'm happy with. And it's just stood up to the very first test we would do of design, which is, when I need to make changes, are they localized? If a change requires many scattered modifications to the code, something in your design is telling you to reorganize the code, to pull things together. If the changes you actually find yourself making are all localized, you've got a good design.